Hi and welcome back, my name is Maddie and I'm a doctor working in the UK. In today's video we're going to be looking at another episode of the Doctor Stone anime. Specifically we're going to be looking at the one where he reinvents glasses. And I'm going to be explaining the medical science behind the scene as well as going through whether this stacks up with what we do today as doctors. Now, if you like videos like this, why not check out this video where I also break down where Dr. Stone creates antibiotics. Otherwise, if you don't want to miss out on any other videos like this, why not subscribe down below? Alright, let's have a look at today's scene. Okay, so in this scene we see the young character Soika describing a classical story of what children might say when they're having problems with their vision. Now, children can often find it difficult to describe the exact symptoms that they are having. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you um, and so often it's quite difficult to make sense of what they mean um, and that's where my job comes in as a doctor interpreting um, what they're trying to describe to us now not all children present through um, reporting fuzziness in their vision. Um, and sometimes it can be picked up in more subtle ways. For example, if a child is needing to sit um, closer to the front of the classroom to be able to see the blackboard, or if they're constantly rubbing their eyes or describing tired eyes or headaches, these can be just a few of the signs that might suggest that there's a problem with the child's vision. And as you can see in this scene, Soika's making this grimace appearance with his eyes to try to make up for the visual difficulty that he's having. <laughs> okay, so interesting. When he puts the helmet on, his vision is improving. So what's happening here is that the circular cutouts are acting as pinholes, which basically block off any unfocused rays of light coming from the surroundings that might be causing their vision to be out of focus. <laughs> So the useful thing in doing this pinhole test is that if your blurred vision is corrected when you do this test, then it means that the cause of your blurred vision can be corrected with glasses. So what does short-sightedness mean? Well, what it means is that distant objects appear blurred, whereas objects that are closer to you appear more clearly. Now, short-sightedness usually occurs when the eyes grow slightly too long. As a result, this means light doesn't focus on the light-sensitive tissue, or otherwise known as the retina, at the back of the eye properly. Instead, the light rays focus just in front of the retina, resulting in distant objects appearing blurred. Now it's not exactly clear why this happens, but it often runs in families, and it's also associated with people focusing on near objects for prolonged periods of time, particularly if you're reading a book or spending a lot of time in the, on a computer, especially during your childhood years. So what can be done about it? Let's have a look. <laughs> Now, it isn't actually known who invented glasses. However, the first recorded people to have used them were the Romans. They found out that glass could enhance um, visualizing small texts, and what they did was created small glass spheres and used them as magnifying glasses. Now, the first wearable glasses were actually created in Italy in the 13th century, and those were made up of glass-blown lenses, like what you've seen in Dr. Stone, 
um, and these were then mounted either onto wooden frames or leather frames, and users would either perch them on the end of the nose or hold them to their eye when trying to read. Now these were mainly used by monks in monasteries reading ancient texts, but their popularity grew as the technology improved. And as glasses became more popular, the Italian creations moved more into Europe, um, mainly being purchased by the wealthy. Now, at the time in Europe, scholarship was deemed to be a prized attribute, and as a result, wearing glasses became more of a fashion statement or a status symbol, which indicated prosperity or intelligence, whereas in my case, I actually wear them because I need them. Oh, <laughs> and this is why I love the Dr. Stone anime. It's the ingenuity of the characters and how they guide you through how they make every new rediscovery going step by step. It kind of reminds me of that uh, YouTube channel um, which shows you how common things are made. So I don't know why, but it gives you a real satisfying sort of feeling just watching something simple being reconstructed. おお。So in this scene what they're doing is polishing off the lens so that it looks more translucent rather than opaque. And there is a medical condition that can affect the eye which causes your vision to be clouded like this and that is called a cataract and what, what's occurring there is you get an opacification on the lens and people often come through describing clouded vision. Now the great thing about this is that it's one of the most successful and easy operations to do um, and people often report almost 100% relief after the surgery has been performed. <laughs> Okay, so what he's doing in this scene is it looks like he's creating that artificial lens with a surface to mirror that of your own eye. And the purpose of that is to help refocus light onto the correct part of the retina, so to correct the blurred vision that he's suffering from. Okay, so in this next scene, um, what he's doing should seem familiar to a lot of us when we've gone to the optician, and what he's testing there is whether the lens is correcting the refractive error, and that board that he's using is a rudimentary form of what we call a Snellen chart, and I use this in my everyday practice to test people's visual acuity. Now normally rather than having symbols, we have letters, and people try to read down to the lowest line they can. And so to set this up, normally what you do is you stand six meters away from the cell and chart and cover one eye and try to read down to the lowest level. Now, typically a person should be able to read down to the level that is labeled with a six, which basically means that you are able to read at six meters what a normal person is able to read at six meters. Now you might be thinking six meters is quite a distance. So what we typically do in our consultation rooms is we put a mirror in front of us and hold the Snellen chart behind us and if you keep yourself three meters away from that mirror you're actually creating a distance of six for them to read it. Now it's really important to test both eyes separately because one eye can make up for the weakness in the other and if left for a long enough time that can cause a problem in of itself. It's also important to test both eyes separately because they both might require a different strength lens. So now, next time you're at the opticians, you'll have a better idea as to what they're testing. <laughs> and there you have it, the first pair of glasses created by Dr. Stone. Um, but of course nowadays we've got more refined uh, forms, you know, we've got spectacles or we've got contact lenses and I'm just thankful that I don't have to wear a pumpkin on my head. Seika, 
Okay, so it's all built up to this. We've, we've seen how he's created it. We've seen him test both eyes separately. Let's see if it works. And of course it's going to work, it's Dr. Stone and another milestone accomplished. Um, and you know what, I really love this show and I have to give a shout out to the authors and creators of the show because what they've done is they've transformed something which might have been a really boring topic um, to learn about into something so interesting that you just want more. So a great anime and I would recommend it to anyone of, of all ages. You know, I feel I feel like I've learnt a lot from Dr. Stone, and I'm a qualified doctor. Now, of course, there's one thing I haven't touched upon in this episode, and that is the other treatments for short-sightedness. And of course, there are things like surgery, um, but that's quite a big topic, so I might leave that for a future video. Anyway, I hope you found today's video enjoyable, interesting, and we've learned something together. If you have, please do consider giving us a like, and why not subscribe to the channel as it really helps me out with putting out more videos like this. Also, please leave us any recommendations for any other videos that you'd like me to break down or explain. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. <laughs>